Hey everybody, it's Christina. Welcome back to the channel. As I promised in my update for my 23 things of 2023 that I would do a video and an update of my craft room. And I did make some changes. That was a part of my process of getting back into my craft room after not being in it for a couple of months and getting to touch and feel and kind of look at all of my supplies once again and also feel like I got myself a little bit more organized. And in previous craft room tours, I um, always said I love to have my countertops clear, so it gave me lots of space for crafting. But I have discovered, after not being in here for a while, that having it in sight is better than it being in the drawers. Now, th some things I have to keep in drawers, but I love now this backdrop. What you're looking at right now is the view that you usually get when I am showing myself on camera, which I don't do very often, but when I do, that is my backdrop now. So normally it was clear of things, but now it's got all this great color and I love it like this. So I'm gonna take you on a full tour of my craft room. And if you haven't seen previous videos of my craft room, I explain all about my countertops, all about my cabinets in those videos. I'm not gonna go over that again today because I don't want to, this video to go on super long like they normally do. So we are going to move in a little bit closer and I'm gonna show you how I have my craft room organized and even tell you about some of the changes that I made. So this section of my craft room is always the hardest area for me to figure out and it's also not the cutest area and by no means is my craft room uh, Pinterest or Instagram worthy. Um, I just try to keep things nice and organized because if I don't, then I get overwhelmed and I'm not inspired. This area right here holds my tall Alex drawers, which is this unit right here. I am not going to go through that. That is still the same as it was before. It's just got odds and end things in there. So I am not going to go over that one. Plus all those drawers just take forever to go through. <laughs> Next to my Alex drawers is one of the carts that you can get at Michael's. I believe it's called the Hudson cart. And I have two of the boards on it that you can buy for toppers. The top one, I have nothing inside the cart. I'm really just using it for a place to keep my big shot. So if I ever need it, I can pull it out and use it. It just takes up a lot of space on my countertops and I'm not uh, currently using it. So it's just living right there. Next to that cart is my built-in bookcase. This was installed when we um, refinished this room and this is actually, this room is on the third floor. The three shelves, I used to have my ink cubes or ink storage on there and my paper storage. And this is, and I'm not sure what I'm doing with this just yet. It's gonna stay like this until I figure it out. But the top shelf is where I keep fabric. The bot, the second shelf is where I'm keeping a bunch of uh, kind of specialty cardstock. And then down on the bottom is my camera bags for my cameras and some extra uh, printer paper. This section right here has kind of become my hub for all of my electronics. I have, as you can see, a, a spaghetti of wiring over there and it's just, it's a disaster over there. But this is where I have a lot of my electronic stuff. So um, this gray stand used to be where I kept my Cricut and my other die cutting machines. And since I don't really use them anymore, I took them out of here. I put them in my storage room. If I need them, I can simply bring them out. It's not that big of a deal, but it's just that I don't need to be taking up space for something I'm not using that often. Um, on this gray shelves, I do have now have my printer. So I have my regular printer and on the bottom shelf is where my sublimation printer is. I also keep extra of my Nina cardstock, some of the extra large um, die cutting plates for the Big Shot. And then on top of this gray unit, I have my MacBook Pro. That's what I use for all of my video stuff. I have the little white unit that has a whole bunch of electronic things in it like cords and wires and stuff that I'm not using. That's also where I stick my SD cards when I'm not using those. And on top of that, I have a Windows laptop, which I use for my full-time job. And then on the wall, I put in two new shelves. So these two shelves are from Lowe's. They are from the Roth and Allen collection. And on here is where I am holding a lot of the stuff that I'm not using currently for electronics. So I have my um, hard drive up there. I have an extra camera. And then I have the second shelf is where I kind of charge everything. So I charge my camera, I charge my microphones and my mouse or keyboards or whatever else needs to get charged there. So that's become kind of like my electronic hub over here. 
Now we're gonna move into the fun part of my craft room. This is my desk. This is where I film and work and edit videos and do all the fun stuff um, right from this spot here. So this is, again, um, countertop uh, is a quartz countertop. I love this countertop, so easy to clean. And then I have two sets of drawers. I have a set on one side and a set on the other side and then a middle drawer. So I'm gonna go through those first and then we'll talk about what's on top of the countertops. In the top drawer is where I keep a lot of my tools. In the very back here, I'll just start from the back, is where I have my salt, salt cellar and I keep in here my uh, cloth for cleaning stamps. I did have to recently switch that out because the one I was using got a little stinky and I don't know if it was from keeping it closed, but I can't keep it closed when it's inside this drawer, so I have to keep it open anyway. So hopefully that'll help with uh, it not getting too stinky. I tried washing it, but it just didn't, I couldn't get the stink out of it. So I have my stamp cleaner. I have a microfiber cloth. Got to have my cheater glasses for when I'm wearing my contacts because I can't see without them. And then I have some foam tape, things like correction tape, some painter's tape, my favorite mint tape. And then in this section right here is just all different types of tools that I might need, um, like my lipstick, chapstick for when I'm getting ready to film, my favorite glue and that kind of thing is in this drawer. The second drawer uh, used to be filled with tons of different tools that uh, didn't fit in the top one, stuff I didn't reach for every day, and I thought it was just taking up valuable space. So I decided to make this more into my cardstock storage for my card bases as well as my pre-cut cards. Most of the bins that you're gonna see in my craft room are from Inner Design or from M Design or from Hobby Lobby, not Hobby Lobby, but um, home goods or places like that where I just got them because they were they were inexpensive. But I'm keeping all of my uh, cardstock. I used to always have all of my cardstock cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I used to have two of these units filled up with cardstock. I'm down to just a half of one. And I don't cut my cardstock anymore. I will put cardstock in here if I cut a full sheet down, um, but otherwise, this is just um, stuff that I'm reaching for before I cut a full sheet. This way I can use that up before I start touching any of the other stuff. Then in the very bottom, all I have down here are just extra packages of paper uh, baby wipes, as well as in the back here, I have all of my envelopes that I use and I just pretty much use white envelopes. I don't uh, really go for colored ones, but that's just because I just never really purchased them. So, all right, that was that section. In the middle section of my desk is this really thin drawer. And when I first had this installed, this desk installed, I was concerned about how small or thin this drawer was, but actually it turned out to be one of the best drawers in my craft room. Because in here is where I store all of my die cutting plates. I have my spell binders here, um, the universal plates, the regular plates. I have my Misty that I use all the time. I have my old Misty that has actually become just one that has my stamp on it that I use for uh, doing ink swatches, my ink or my stamp cleaners in here, my um, score buddy is in here. So this has become like the uh, uh, the best drawer in my craft room, I can't think, because it's the easiest. It's right there in front of me. And when I'm crafting, I could just kind of pull this out and I can get my plates, but I also have a place to kind of put things away and get them out of the way when I am crafting. Moving over to the left-hand side of my desk. In here is my embossing drawer or my quick reach kind of inking drawer. In the very back, I have a bamboo um, container that I've had for years that has all of my Gina K um, acrylic blocks in it. And then I have my most used embossing supplies right here in between. And then in this bamboo box is where I keep my inks that are my go-to. So my black inks are all in here, my Versamark, and that's you know what I reach for quite often. So those are right here. This cabinet right here is just a mix of, mostly in the very back of it where you can't see, are electronic things, um, extra cables, more stuff that probably should be over on the other side of my room. But I keep my full, um, cardstock in here. So I have my watercolor paper, my UPO paper, and my 
um, what's that other one? Bristol uh, cardstock is in here. I have an iPad stand in here. And then I also have a big roll of tape. So that's kind of like what's in this section. I don't go in this very often because I keep a supply of my watercolor and Bristol cardstock already cut down in one of my drawers. So I don't need to go into this very often. Um, but I do see that I, something I need is I need to change the pad or the cover on my iPad. So I'm glad I saw that. On this side of my desk is my Alex drawers. I had these Alex drawers here once before, but my mom, when she moved into her apartment, needed, um, wanted a desk. So I volunteered and I gave up my Alex drawers for her so we could make a desk for her because she had one set of Alex drawers. She just needed another one to make a desk. So I volunteered to give her that. When she, um, when I was cleaning out her apartment after she passed away, I took back the, the Alex drawer. So it's kind of like a memory piece too, because I remember giving it to her and she was using it in her, in her apartment for her own little crafty section that she had. On the top here is my Gemini Jr. This, um, spinny thing that it's on is by Totally Tiffany. And I got this idea from Kathy Zilski here on YouTube. She had, um shown this, I've seen it like a million times on her videos, and I thought that was so clever. And I had it, my uh, Big Shot on here, but the Big Shot didn't fit on the side of this. So I pulled back out my Gemini Junior because that was in storage for the longest time. And that fits perfectly here. So now I have a nice little die cutting place right next to the side of my desk. And in the very back here is my Spellbinders Platinum 6. I pull that out when I'm doing embossing or using my Glimmer machine. And then we'll take you through some of the drawers of my Alex unit. I'm not going to show you all of them because some of them are just, mm, they're not even really craft supplies, so we won't have to go into those. This top drawer has adhesive in it. I moved all of my adhesive from my tall Alex drawers over to here so that maybe if they're right here, I might grab them more like these um, score tapes I've had forever and I really just need to start using them because they're not getting used that much. I've got a whole bunch of extra foam tape back here, some liquid tape, um, some extra of my connect glue, and that kind of thing is in this drawer. So that's what I keep in the top drawer. The third drawer has some tools that were in the right-hand side of my desk that um, I really didn't want to keep there. It's all things that I reach for, but not all of the time. So they didn't need to take up valuable real estate right next to me. And I have them all in here. So in here are things like my big wide um, scrapbook.com tape, which I only use every once in a while, my bigger roll of my mint tape, and then I have some other basic kind of crafty tools in there. The next drawer down is where I have some embellishments. I also have some tags and things like that in here. Then the very bottom drawer are Cricut supplies that I don't use. So they kind of just went into the bottom drawer and I'll probably forget that they're there at some point. So, but that is where I'm keeping those right now. This is gonna be my favorite section of my craft room. And this is what I call my workspace, my work zone. I have um, this full wall filled with countertops and I love the amount of space I have. It is a perfect amount of space for when I'm trying to get things organized or when I'm trying to pick supplies that I wanna use for crafting. In previous videos or previous room tours, this was always an empty space. I always felt like I needed to have nothing on my countertops, but I'll tell you, since I put this stuff up here, I'm loving having all of this color and everything right out in view, which is so helpful. So we're gonna start with the cabinets and I'm gonna show you what's in the cabinets. And then the last, very last part, we'll talk about what I have on my countertops. The way I have my cabinet set up is I have a very small um, door cabinet here. And then next to that, I have a bank of four drawers. So there's two smaller drawers, two medium-sized drawers. Then next to that, I have a bank of drawers that is one medium-sized drawer and two larger drawers. I have another bank of four that is my um, two small, two medium drawers. And then on the very end, I have a corner cabinet as well as an angled cabinet. I'm gonna go through all of these and then we'll go ahead and do our count my countertop when I'm done. So this is my little tiny cabinet and it is great for storing things like my mats, my extra um, large trimmer. I keep that in, in there as well as my older trimmer. And then on one side, I have my larger scoreboard, my punch board, and I believe there's a couple of other um, 
die cutting machine mats in there as well. Moving into my first section of four drawers, this top drawer is where I have my sequin holder. So I have two sequin holders. These are the Elizabeth Ward, I think is what they're called, um, holders, and these are great for holding your sequins. I have two of these. One I just recently purchased because I needed to um, fill up and I had a lot of that were just laying around. And then the very back of that is where I put all of my shaker pieces. So I have all of my things for making shaker cards back there. So one of the things I felt like I needed to do when I got back into my craft room was I had to get my Tim Holtz stuff off the shelf that was in my room. I had a lot of things in the tins, like the Tim Holtz tins, and I still have them in the tins, but I put them so that I can see them. So my embossing glazes were on a shelf high up and I, out of sight, out of mind. I, I saw the tins there, but never thought that, you know, pull those down because your glazes are in there. So I have them now in my drawer with all my embossing powders. So these are all my different colored embossing powders and things I don't reach for quite as often because I sent, seem to only go for the like the white and the black, and but they're all in here. And then on the other side, you'll see that I have my embossing paste and stuff like that. And then I also have like a little container of palette knives. In some of the drawers, you're gonna see these little dividers. Those are just the M Design dividers and I use that so if I need to have something, um, two kind of subject areas or two topics in one drawer, I have a way to divide it. And then the bottom two drawers in here are empty. So when I did some reorganization, I didn't get rid of anything. It's just that I moved things around and it actually ended up with two empty drawers, which was pretty nice. This middle section is my uh, two larger drawers at the bottom and then I have a drawer at the top and in the top drawer is where I have my hot foil my glimmer system So I have my hot foil plates over here along with the supplies in the back of a divider to help Keep my foils from falling over to the other side and in here is where I have all of my glimmer hot foil system foils and I separated those because I have a whole drawer full of other types of foils so this is all just for the glimmer hot foil uh, machine so we're gonna move into my bottom two drawers here, and this is my stamp and die storage area. This has been stamp and die storage since I moved into this room and we did the renovations and I absolutely love this, but I did update my system a little bit. One of the things I had in here was the, um, everybody uh, uses the double uh, section clear organizers to keep their stamps and dies in. And I was using that, then I kind of dawned on me that I'm wasting space because I have all of this space either in front or behind. So I did a little updating and I ended up getting these five inch uh, dividers and I've made three sections in here. So this one actually has four because I put, I had an extra one and I put my larger stamps here and then figured this can just kind of help support it so they don't fall down. But what I did was I put those in and this actually, my stamps used to take up two sections because I was using that clear divider and now it all fits in here perfectly. So in the middle one, I have a clear container. I have my sentiment strips from Spellbinders in the Simon Says Stamp envelopes. And I thought this was a perfect place to keep them. So if I'm looking to do a sentiment, it's usually gonna be I'm stamping a sentiment so I can go into here and grab from there if I need to. For my stamps, I was watching this great uh, video and I, it's, I'm trying to remember the name of the YouTuber. I will leave a link to her down below. I know you can go back and find it because I just recently saw the video. And the way she stored a lot of her stamps and dies is by using these comic book dividers. So they're just a, a thin plastic. I did have to cut them down a little bit so that they would fit into this area. And then I just relabeled. So before I just had laminated cardstock, but this works great. And then I have all of my stamps separated by company. And I downsized my stamps a long time ago and did a little de-stash of those. So I have um, just this one section, which actually used to take up two sections because of that unit. But now because of this, I have like all of my stamps are in one section. And then I have plenty of room to grow where I can actually have like even three sections of here in here of stamps. I use the Avery L Pockets. And I do use the um, large size one. That's not the extra large. These are the large size ones for everything, including my dies. Unless they're too big, then I will put them into the extra large envelopes, which I have this one up front because I want to use that stamp set very soon. 
In the bottom drawer, I kind of went with the same system. I actually have my dies and embossing folders in here. And again, separated with these five inch dividers and have those um, separated. So everything over here are all of my dies. Um, my dies actually don't fit or they do fit, but they were flopping over too far back because they get heavy. So in the back is what I what I did was I took a clear to, clear container and put my Sizzix dies back there so it kind of holds up and then I have them marked as, as Tim Holtz back there. In the middle, I have my thin dies or my slimline dies as well as larger size dies, again, using the extra large pockets. And then over here, I just recently did this. I moved all of my embossing folders into these pockets as well. Anything that I had the artwork for, I kept it and put it into the front so that I could see what the design is. And then back here are my extra large um, embossing folders as well. So in the middle, I have room to either grow my die collection or my embossing folder collection, and I could just kind of adjust things around. In this next section, we are going to look at the top drawer, and in here is where I have all of my mini ink cubes. Some of them are inside of the metal tin, so these are all my Gina K. I have those in here. I have my distress inks, my archival inks. I have even full cube distress inks in here, as well as little daubers. So whenever I need to do some detailed um, blending, I have those there. And then this unit right here is one that I used to have that had just my blending. I had a brush for almost, or blending, um, a blending tool for almost every single one of my distressings, but I don't use those as much, so I downsize those. I keep the tool itself in here, and then I have my alcohol inks here, as well as the little foam dauber, foam um, pads for the blenders. I moved my alcohol inks here. They used to be on the shelves, and then of course, out of sight, out of mind, I wasn't using them, so that is where I put that um, them, and then I also put my, my little blower in here too, so kind of, so they stayed together. Then the second drawer is where I moved my kind of specialty cardstock because um, I was getting certain things confused. So it was more like my Bristol cardstock was getting confused with my um, Nina cardstock and I wasn't sure which is which. So I decided I kind of have to start keeping those kind of things separate because if I don't get up here every day, I might forget what's what. So in here, this tray right here, I have my Yupo paper, my Express It cardstock for the um, for blending with alcohol markers. I have my watercolor paper, distress, and then vellum over here as well. In this drawer, I have my Spectrum Noir markers, some uh, watercolors. I have moved my distress crayons in here because they again were on a shelf, forgot where they were, were. I also put my watercolor pencils in here, my Tim Holtz. I have my watercolor uh, Nouveau watercolors here. And then I have this little clear container that has all my brushes and stuff in. This bottom drawer is a sea of foil. So this is all my other foil that I have. So I have my mini mink in here. I have the larger mink, but I took that out because the drawer wouldn't close. It kept getting stuck in the drawer. So I had to take that out and put that into storage. But I use the mini mink more than I do the larger one. The larger one I only used when I was working on specific projects. This here is my corner cupboard. I kind of keep a mess of a whole bunch of stuff in here. So I have my supplies in here for my storage. I have cleaning supplies. I have some tools I don't use anymore. I have ribbon I don't use anymore, but I want to keep a hold of. So that kind of stuff is in here. I'm not going to go into great detail about that because that's just, well, it's not pleasant looking in there. <laughs> so this is a cabinet that's at an angle. And in here is where I have my press and seal, my parchment paper, and my vinyl and iron on. Um, is in here as well. So I'm actually considering uh, donating some of this because I don't really use it anymore, but I'm going to hold on to it for a little while longer, see how I feel um, in a couple months, but I'm kind of leaning towards donating it since I'm not really using it. I realized I was getting ready to film my countertops on the above the cabinets that I forgot to show you what I have on my desk here. So we are going to kind of hop in and I'll show you what is in my or on my desk. So my desk is a quartz countertop. I have a mini Tim Holtz trimmer right here. I have a container for my baby wipes. And then I have this little three tier tray. This is an idea that I got from Kathy Zilski's craft room video and that I just recently purchased. So that's sitting here. Not sure if how I have it set up is how it's going to stay. But for right now, it has my lenses, my lens cap covers for my cameras, 
Then I have my um, bone folder. I have my picker uppers for my embellishments or my sequins. And then I have a couple of other little odds and end tools. Also from Kathy's video is the glass bottle that you can, um, I have, like she did, put my alcohol spray in here so that I can clean my glass um, matte surface. And then I have my two tweezers here. Next to that, I keep this little dollar store glass jug jar that has my spray bottle in it for water it has my tea ruler and my two uh tim holt scissors i usually was keeping these in the drawers but every time i close the drawer they would get stuck in the drawer so this is a better place for them so i have them sitting right next to that little three-tier uh shelf there moving down my desk i have my glass um glass board studio top this is in i believe 16 by 22 I think that's what the size is, and I love this glass board. I have my Tim Holtz one as well, but this is fantastic. And I finally figured out how not to have a glare, although you're getting a glare right now because of the way you're angled, but I figured out how not to have a glare when I'm filming. And one thing that's really nice about this glass is that it's also magnetic. So I have a magnetic bowl that I keep here at my desk, and when I'm filming, I'll keep this just right uh, right on the glass in the corner so I have a place to throw my dies and this way all those little tiny dies don't accidentally get lost within all of the little scraps of paper that I have on my desk. Um, I also on occasion charge my iPad up here so that's just sitting here because it's charging. And then at the very end of my desk I have my heat gun so I have that right here. I have the Milwaukee heat gun. I've had this thing for years and I love this. I have tried to find an alternative because I am so worried that this is going to die at some point because I've had it for years and they no longer make it, at least not that I can find. I may have to do like an eBay search or something for it, but this is absolutely my favorite um, heat tool and it works great. So I, I'm either gonna have to try to uh, source out one on eBay or find an alternative, but I, my nephew does work for Milwaukee, so I might have to ask him to see if he can find me that one because I love that one. I have this notebook right here. This is just a Martha Stewart notebook that I use for writing down notes, quick notes for when I'm making a card or if I need to do a supply list or anything like that. And then I have my monitor and my keyboard and my mouse all right here as well. This section right here was recently changed. This used to be just two shelves, but I went ahead and added a third shelf. But what was on here was all of my Tim Holtz storage containers. And I, like I said, because they were in the storage containers, the tins, I forgot that I had those things. So taking them off there, putting them in drawers, and then actually having more of an open um, storage here is way better than I was happy that I had before. On the very top, I have this wire basket that has um, my power cord in there because I have a plug up above here. On this shelf right here, I have my bag that holds all of my colored pencils. I actually have two of these. One of them is downstairs because I have been coloring downstairs. But in here is my Prismacolor pencils and then my Faber-Castell polychromo pencils are downstairs with when I was coloring. And then I have just this little open space right here because I have, and I have to bring it upstairs, I keep forgetting to bring it up, this bowl that my mom was using um, to keep her crochet yarn in while she was crocheting. And, I, and it has a little spool of crochet and something that she was working on before she passed away. And I wanna kind of put that up there. And then over here is a picture of my sister and I. Um, my sister also passed away a couple months ago. and our last Christmas together, we both gave each other um, a sister's picture frame. And this is the one she actually gave me. So it's a picture of her and I when we were smaller, or younger rather. And then on the very end, I just have this little container that has Nouveau drops in it. On the second shelf, I love these containers. I got these at Amazon a while ago. I think they came in a package of four. So I bought two packages and they are just these perfectly little square containers which are great for displaying things in and I use them to display my Nouveau drops. So I have uh, two sets on each side of this container which is my Alta New alcohol inks. And for years, everybody's been telling me to put my stencils into a binder and I recently did that. So I have a stencil binder here now. 
I have my favorite twine, which is May Arts twine, which I use for sometimes for cards, but I use it for other things too. And then I have my Distress Oxides on display. And for the display, um, I took down the nail polish holders that I had hanging on my wall and I'm actually, oh, actually, no, that's not nail polish holders. That's the container that some scrapbook.com uh, drops or pops came in. So they actually are being used for stairs for my Distress Oxides. And then this container, which I keep on the end of my shelf, is all of my felt. I have been collecting felt for a long time because I wanted to use them in cards and I never did. And mainly it's because I've had them tucked away in drawers. So what I did was I took all my felt, kind of wound them up into um, just little rolls and have them clipped with fabric clips and inside this container. And that now lives right on this shelf right here. This is my corner of my cabinet. So I have my scan and cut right here. Used it once, can't wait to use it again. I have my guillotine Tim Holtz uh, trimmer. I recently had to uh, kind of retire my Fisker trimmers that I use, used to use all of the time to this one because the blade on it just was not holding up and no matter how many times I replaced it, within a couple of cuts, I would get that torn edge and I just didn't like it. Back in this corner, I have just a faux plant here that I have hanging from the ceiling or from the slant on my ceiling, a uh, desk lamp, as well as paper toweling. And then on the wall, I have some of my foam or foil that is just on, I think that's We Are Memory Keepers uh, holder that's just attached to the wall, which gave a little bit of extra color in this area. Then below that, I have a little wicker basket that I use to keep new supplies in. And the only new supplies I have right now is some mail that I received from Spellbinders for a project for the next two or three months. Moving down my counter is my cardstock storage. So these two containers right here were being used for other things, but now they are for my Spellbinders cardstock. I have all of my Spellbinders cardstock in these two clear containers. Those are by Russell and Hazel. And then moving down here, I have some M Design um, magazine holders that I purchased years ago and use those on the other side of my room. And these two are being reserved for new cardstock. Then this middle one right here is going to be my Lawn Fawn and Simon Says Stamp, and then the rest of it is Paper Tray Ink. I did purchase some magazine dividers. I saw that on Kathy Zilski's video, how she used magazine dividers. I am not sure if I'm going to use them because I do keep everything inside of these clear plastic um, ticket holders or job ticket holders is what they're called. And I think I might keep those because they, um, what I do is an example here. Because what I do is I take all my scraps and I just throw them right in the front and then I never have to worry about having some kind of scrap storage. And I think I might just stay with the system because it's worked for me so far um, and I might return those dividers. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to keep these because they are shorter um, than the cardstock. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep those. So those are there for right now until I make up my mind. And then moving down my countertop. Next to my cardstock, I have my Organize More marker storage, and I have three of those. I think they came in a bundle, and I have my o Olo markers, my Ohuhu markers, which I love that name, and then the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers, and then on top of that, I have, oops, three of these little containers that I showed you before, and I have my um, scrapbook.com pop colors there. Then next to that, I have the Sarah Renee Clark's... Um, color color cubes I don't I forget what she calls these but in here are just hundreds of ideas of different color combinations that you can use together and this comes in so handy when I am looking for an idea for colors or um, getting needing some inspiration so that's right here on top of that I just have this little vase with some faux greenery in it and what that does it blocks um, the plug or outlet that I have back here, as well as one of the um, uh, tubes that runs wires that are from some of my studio lights. So this way um, you don't see them whenever I do a front view video that you don't even know that's there. Below that is where I have my Tim Holtz media map because I do on occasion do some uh, work over on this side of my room if I'm feeling the need to stand or if I'm working here pulling colors. 
Just below that is my Tim Holtz glass media mat. I love this mat and I used to use this all the time at my desk and this is what I filmed on, but I bought the white one and I use this one over here now for things that I'm just either prepping or playing around. This is, you know, a surface that I can use instead of doing things directly on my countertop. Next to my markers and my cubes are my ink pad storage and I'll talk about that in a second, but we're just gonna kind of zoom over to this section first. I have a shelf that's hanging on the wall that I may or may not um, leave there, but for right now it's there. If I ever need additional storage, I can take this down and add some shelving here. But right now I just have a little decoration on there and then I use that to hold some of my hoops for my embroidery machine that I keep in my storage area. And then on my countertop below that, I have, it's warm up here because I am on the third floor of my house. So I have this little fan on, so uh, because right now I can't have my air conditioner running, otherwise that's all you would hear. So I have that little fan going, and then I also have another one of my desk lamps. Next up, I have my ink storage. These are the Stampin' storage units that I used to have in my Calyx, and um, they're actually gonna go back over to the other side of my craft room, because I did just order some Organize More ink storage that um, I want to put here once they arrive. So they have a couple of weeks before they get here. But I have my Distress Oxides, I have my Simon Says Stamp, and then I have just a little miscellaneous stuff. But I do also have Concord and Ninth Stamps ink pads coming. So I'm going to need a place to store those. And as you can see, I'm completely out of room. So I am going to be moving these back out of this area, back over to my shelves. And then I will have my Organize More, which I'm really excited about. Um, right in this section here. On the very top, I have these little, on the top here, I have uh, two of these things, they're called floral frogs, and they're great displays when you uh, need something to stand your card up into and take photos of. Um, I have two of the nail polish holders that used to hang on the wall, but I took them down and now they're just sitting on the top. I have Distress Stain, which I don't really use, but they're up here. My Distress Oxide refills, that's all I have right now when I need to order a refill for something that ran out, I will do that and they'll be stored up here. On the other side, I have some Distress Paint, which I don't really use, but when I bought bundles for the new colors, I ended up with Distress um, Paint. And then I also have my Distress Ink refills, which those are the only colors I have right now. And then, like I said, this is all my ink storage. This right here is a pencil organizer that I had at my desk at work. And what I did was, because I didn't need it there anymore, I brought it home and I'm using it for my blending brushes. So I use Waffle Flower uh, blending brushes. I have two sets. This set right here is for all of my dye-based inks. I, I recently gave them a bath, so they some of them look kind of fresh. The middle ones here are my little Gina K ones, which I need to order some more little ones because that is all I have and I found that I probably need more. I have these little blenders by Waffle Flower and then I have more Waffle Flower over here. It's just a second set of these and these have black washi tape on them so that I know that they go with my Distress Oxides. And that pretty much is my room. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and the update of my craft room and I will catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.